Welcome to Bare Bones Terminal User Interface in Rust on Debian GNU Linux. This is just a little fun utility, or not utility, a little fun exercise in using terminal graphics from Rust. Let's start by creating a project. Let's see, create new, we'll call it Tui Fun. Oops, cargo, sorry, my bad. Cargo new Tui Fun. Change into that directory. We can see that it's got the normal structure. If we start editing the source main file, we can see that it, like all cargo new files, it has a hello program. I'm going to split my terminal window here so that I can see both the command line and the text file I'm editing. Let's go ahead and test this to make sure it runs. Cargo run, and there it's compiling, and yes, it did print hello world. Here is, we're going to be using ANSI, A-N-S-I, sequences, terminal sequences, to control the cursor. You wouldn't want to do this in a real project. There are other better TUI tools out there. But this will give you a feel for how what's going on a little bit under the bare bones hood, hopefully. We're going to print to the terminal window using the print macro an escape sequence which is composed of a backslash x1b left square bracket. This is the hex code ANSI sequence for escape. And then the code for turning something red is 31m. going to close out my print statement, save the file, and now when I come over here and run this, the hello world should be in red. And it is. Yay! We're making progress. Let's move this color change into its own separate function. I'm going to delete this, go create a new function called set foreground color. At this moment, all it's going to do is set red. So we're going to paste that command in there. And from the main, we'll have to call that function, which is set foreground ah, set foreground color now we save the file run it again we should get the same results yay we did what if we want to tell it what color we want to use like say we want it to print in red well we can do that too we have to pass that parameter to the function we'll call it C for color it's going to be a string pointer and we need to be able to match on it. So we'll say match on C. When you see that C is red, then do this. We need a comma after the match statement instead of a semicolon. And then we need to catch everything that's not within our parameters, which is what that underscore does. Oops, you know greater than arrow, not just a greater than. I need to copy that. Oops. And this time it's to 31M, it's 32M. Oops. That's not what I wanted. Sorry, my bad. In this case, we're going to print this color is an invalid color. If C is not red, I'm going to delete this. If C is not red, then we'll print the that it's an invalid color. Right now, as soon as I turn that period into a comma, this program should work. Let's give it a test. And I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, I put a semicolon there. I meant to put a comma. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm still missing something. Oh, I didn't close out, out the uh, match statement. Duh. Now let's try it. Cargo run, and it works. What if we put in, say, green? While our match statement doesn't know anything about green, so when we try running it, we should get the error message. Green is an invalid color, and that's what happens. 
However, we can easily add a green. We're going to duplicate this line. I'm going to cut it and paste it twice. Cut it once and paste it twice. Change the red to green and put in the code for green, which is 32M. You can look up on a web search, just the web search for ANSI terminal sequences or something similar to find the codes to control the ANSI sequences. Save that file. Try running it again. This time it should print in green. And it did. We can even add control U, 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 a yellow and a cyan. I don't know if this is cyan or blue, but we'll call it that. Now we can change it to cyan and print it or run it. And there it is, blue or cyan. What if we wanted to clear the screen first? Well, we can do that. We can create a new function. Let's go to the top of the file for that. Function clear underscore screen. You can call it anything you want to, but I think that's a pretty good name. And the ANSI sequence for that is print bang. The escape code sequence. 2J is the sequence for clearing the screen. clear screen command here. Clear screen call to the function. Save the file. Now when we run it, it'll clear the screen first. Yay! We can change our colors whenever we want to. We're going to split up this message. And you can use print line or print either one depending on whether you want a new, return, a, a, a new line, a hard return in your text. Now it's not doing anything, so let's put the hard line back in. And we're going to set the foreground color for the second phrase to. We haven't done yellow yet, have we? Ah. Yellow. Save that. Run it. Hello world, two different colors. Now let's try moving the cursor. We've got a clear screen, we've got a setup foreground color. There are also codes for setting background colors and for traits like bold or high intensity. We're not going to look at any of that. You can go Google all that. This is just an example to kind of get you started. We want to, what did I just say? Move the cursor. Move. We need to have an X and Y coordinate. The row, I'm sorry, the uh, line, which would be row in this case, or line. We'll call it line. Coordinate comes first. And it's going to be a U size type of value. Then we need a column, which is also a U size. And the way we move the cursor using ANSI sequences is print, bang, escape code. I always forget what it is, have to think of it. Uh, let's see, what is the, oh, it's the column as a variable, semicolon, the row, capital H. So column, row. Now we can come down here and say, before you print the world, move the cursor to, oh, let's say, 13 rows down and 18 columns in. And so we don't get our end of the program cursor, our, our, what am I trying to say here? This thing, command prompt. So the prompt doesn't get in the way, we'll send it back to the top left corner of the screen after printing that and before the program ends. We'll save that, come over here, we're going to run the program, and oops, got an error message, what's the problem? That should not be a semicolon, that should be a comma. Save it and run it. All right, what's row? Didn't have row. What is? Oh, cause I called it line. Line row. Pick one, stick with it. Control save. 
or control s to save cargo run and there we go hello is down at the bottom world is up at the top and then the cursor finally winds up at the very top of the left corner of the screen and prints our normal uh, prompt okay so that covers moving the cursor it covers changing the color it covers clearing the screen ah let's put these functions into a library file the main library file is lib.rs it lives in the source code file so we're in this in the source directory I mean so we will create a new file here called librs in the source directory we're gonna move all these functions copy over there paste over here save it yes come over here start at the top and delete all these one by one control K control K control K control K I'm sure there's a quicker way to control K all these out now we're gonna save that and if we try running this program we will get errors but we'll try it anyway boom one of the reasons the errors is because the main program knows nothing about the librs program so we have to tell it it's a module and the name of the module is lib notice it's not librs even though that's the file name now if we try it we'll get different errors and I'm not actually looking at these errors I know what's happening uh, but we've got different errors now in that they cannot find these functions that's because these functions in the lib file and the librs file are private to this file nothing beyond this file knows about them so we have to declare these functions as public exit the file and save it now if we try running the program we still get errors because main doesn't know where to find these functions even though main knows about the lib file it doesn't know that this clear screen lives in the lib file so we're going to give it that path by saying lib colon and now if I've crossed all my T's and dotted all my I's the program should work uh, oh not enough colons here try it again and there it worked so I think that's enough fun for right now you've seen how to move files into a lib.rs file and you've seen how to make several functions using the ANSI sequences for changing the text color and for moving the cursor that ought to get you started that's enough for now thanks for watching bye